It's Cyber Monday, so for the next few days, everything in the store is 40% off. Just use code PLASTIC at checkout. Love you. Hey, Guy from New Plastic, and today we'll use Substance Painter to texture the Martian gun model we made in the last video and import the textures into Redshift. You can buy this model on the New Plastic Gumroad, all nice and textured beautifully with both Octane and Redshift PBR materials, both low poly and mid poly versions. Great way to support the channel. Also, check out the prints and pins I made on the Pink Eye Gumroad, another great way to support the channel. And consider supporting on Patreon or membership. These videos can take me days to record and edit, and there's absolutely Absolutely no way I can do this without the support of my patrons and members. You'll be able to watch these videos with no ads, get access to the project files, get free products from the store, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Follow me on Instagram at ojang or the channel at Brand New Plastic. Join our Discord, subscribe, listen to Madlib. Let's go. So we have the model we made in the last video. I'm gonna use the UDIM version of the model. I'm gonna add the model to an SDS object with one subdivision. So it just slightly rounds out the harsh edges of the lower poly version without making it too heavy. Another important thing is to set the Fong angle to a point that smooths out what should be smooth and round and keeps the hard edges that should stay hard. That will help Substance Painter reduce the amount of issues with normals and corners. Okay, I'll make the SDS editable with one subdivision. And last thing before sending to Substance is creating ID mats for each part. In ZBrush, you just create polypane textures from your polygroups, but here we're gonna use a vertex color map, a technique I learned from Polygon Pen. So check them out for some top-notch hard surface modeling videos, very, very high quality stuff. Right click on the object, other tags, and vertex color. Now I'll select these points and hit UW to select the whole part. This whole part should be black. Double click on the vertex tag. Let's select blue to represent the black parts and hit apply selected. Now it's blue. Now I'll select this whole part and remove all these points all the way until this section here where the black part ends. Apply selected again with the same color. And now I'll select these points, hit UW to select all the connected parts, which are all black and apply selected with the same color. For the metal parts, I'll switch to polygon selection mode because it's a bit easier to make selections this way. I'll select this ring and this ring and then UF to fill selection, which is why I went to polygon mode, much quicker to select. And I'll do the same with these sections. Then go to the select menu and convert selection. Choose from polygons to points. And now I have all these points selected. Double click the vertex tag, choose a different color and apply selected. And I'll do the same for the red parts with a red color and for the green parts with a green color. Looks like I forgot this red part, so I'll add it as red. And that's it. Now go to file, export, and click on the cogwheel next to the FBX. All these options can stay like this, but it's important to make sure you have vertex colors checked. So it'll export the vertex map you created and hit okay to export. Now it's Substance, create a new file, select your FBX here, make sure you have use UV tile flow checked so Substance will use all the UDIMs. And I usually set the project texture size to 4K, but you can set it to 2K now and change it to 4K at export for faster viewport response. Then hit OK and we have the model here. Now click the bake button at the top. Here everything can stay like this. I like to put anti-aliasing at 16x, which will help reduce some artifacts on the edges of your UV seams that sometimes appear. Then in ID, make sure it's set to vertex color to use the vertex colors we set in cinema. Then I like to increase the secondary rays all the way up on the curvature, thickness, and ambient occlusion maps. Then hit bake. This took around two minutes to bake. And here's our model ready for work. I'll click on this icon at the top right here and maybe just choose a different HDRI. It doesn't really matter, but I do like the Atelier one and I can shift right click and drag around to change the direction of the HDRI. Let's add a fill layer, change albedo to red, and the red parts seem to have a sort of a glittery effect to them. So in the normal map section, I'll add a flakes map. Way too big, so let's increase tiling to scale it down. And we can curb down the roughness and increase metalness. And actually maybe just for the sake of flexibility, I'll remove the flakes from this layer. Add a new fill layer. I'll click the normal channel to only select that and add the flakes map here. Now I can adjust the strength of the flakes independently if I go to normal mode and adjust the opacity. Nice, even smaller. 
cool. Let's reduce the roughness even more and add a new fill layer for the roughness. Up the roughness here, add a black mask, add fill adjustment. And here I'll look for some kind of a dirt map. This grunge wipe looks good. Scale it down. Mm, I can increase the roughness and maybe up the balance, which is essentially the gamma to reveal more of the mask. So the effect will be slightly stronger. It's still subtle, but that's fine for now. Let's add another fill layer of only height information. Bring height down, add a black mask and a fill adjustment. And I'll search for scratches, something subtle like this one. And I'll add another fill with a different scratch layer. Set blend mode to add. And let's add another fill with a third scratch layer, something heavy like this one. Scale down, change blend to add. And let's reduce the balance to tone it down. Lower the opacity. Okay, we got a bunch of imperfections here. Let's group all these layers together. Name it red. And let's add a mask with color selection, which is where we can select the different ID mats as masks. I'll go down here and click on pick color. And now we can see all our color mats and I'll pick red. Beautiful. Name this bump, name this roughness. Maybe scale down this bump fill just a bit. Mm, let's lower the opacity on the flakes channel. And let's see here. I can alt click the mask to see the contents of the mask, by the way. This map, we can scale down a bit. Maybe bring down the roughness, but I want to reveal more of this layer. The mask has too much black in it. Maybe choose a different map. Maybe this one. Invert it. Lower balance a bit. Yeah, this is much better. Okay, I don't know what the hell happened, but the recording just skipped over a few minutes of setting up the green part. I thought of re-recording it, but it was literally the same process as the red part. A base layer with green color and low roughness, another fill layer of roughness masked with a grunge map, and a fill layer of height masked with a mix of grunge maps. And I'll also keep doing this process for the black part, so we're gonna go over this again. Anyway, this time I created another fill layer that has black albedo and height information set to negative, and I added a mask with some grunge maps to create these black scratchy scuffs and this is where we're at now so i'm now squashing the top fill adjustment layer which has some rough voronoi noise and i'm trying to create these long cracks looking scuffs up the balance to choke it up a bit up the distortion change blend to add add another fill and let's see this cracks one scale it down Actually, let's scale it down from here and bring back the tiling here. And I accidentally changed the offset. I meant to rotate it by 90 degrees. So let's do it here. There you go. Now scale it down, up the contrast to kind of match it with the reference. Change blend mode to add. Add another fill adjustment and let's add this cracks map. Let's invert it. Choke it and lower balance to really get these fine lines. Yeah, I like this. Let's bring it under all these and now we can add a filter adjustment and add blur. And just blur out everything under it. Then add a levels adjustment and bring the right notch all the way to the left to really choke it. Okay, it's all a bit busy. Let's break it up with another fill and choose this map. Hide these for now. Let's invert it. Up the contrast and lower the balance. Mm, okay, we're gonna keep editing this layer in a minute. Let's add some more stuff. I'll add another fill layer with black albedo and negative height. Add a black mask and add a generator adjustment with dirt. So it filled up all the crevices with this black color. Mm, but I don't like all the extra dirt it added. Nah, let's get rid of it and add a generator with curvature. Open the curvature menu and change mode to crevices instead of edges. And yeah, same effect but cleaner. And now I can add a paint adjustment, choose some grungy brush and just manually break it up here a bit. 
And I'll also add a paint adjustment to the cracks layer. Choose a cracks brush and just lightly brush some areas. And I can also break up some of these larger cracks. Mm, this brush is too soft. Maybe this. This thin brush might work. Yeah, uh, now I can just draw some cracks manually, remove some others. I know you can do a lot with maps, but there's something very satisfying about hand painting textures, especially because I'm so used to just like procedural work. So it's so fun to just take a minute and hand paint some effects. Okay, I want to actually remove all the black scuffs from these other green parts. So while still being on a paint adjustment layer, I'll select the polygon fill tool, change to UV chunk fill, Make sure it's set to black and click on all these UV islands to remove the effect from them. And okay, let's add another fill layer. Leave it white for now. And here I'm adding a mask and filling up these UV islands with black, but I actually didn't even need to do this, so this doesn't matter. Okay, let's change albedo to black. Add a generator adjustment with metal edge wear. Let's, uh, let's up the wear and lower the contrast. And yeah, let's get rid of this paint layer and add another one on top. And now with the polygon fill tool set to black, remove these islands. So we're only affecting these parts. And add another paint layer and just use some grunge brush to manually break up some of the edge wear. And look, this might seem like overkill to add three different black layers that essentially do the same thing. And it might actually be, but doing this in different layers just allows me to be more precise with managing the different effects and manipulating them more granularly. Okay, let's add another folder, call it black, and add a fill layer. Change albedo to black. Add color select mask and pick the blue. Add a fill layer with only height. Add a black mask and fill adjustment. And let's add this grunge map. I mean, off bat, this looks good. Let's add another fill adjustment and add a Voronoi fractal noise and change the projection to match per UV tile. Otherwise, the 3D noise won't spread right. I think it's a general problem with 3D noises on UDIMs in substance. Okay, let's turn down the opacity of this map just to add some fine details to the underlying map. Mm, let's change the projection of the underlying map to match per tile as well. It doesn't really matter for non-3D noises. Okay, lower the opacity even more. And I think the bump is too strong, so let's turn down the height level on this layer. Much better. And maybe another fill adjustment with a much more sparse map. Like this one. Change projection to match per tile, even though it doesn't really matter here. And yeah, I really like this one. Scale it down a bit. And actually, let's turn the height level back up just a bit. Bring this new grunge map to the bottom of the list and lower the opacity of these top ones. Yeah, I like this one. Okay, let's add another fill layer with only a white albedo. Add a black mask with a fill adjustment and add some sparse grunge map like this. Scale it down just to add a little bit of white spots. And uh, you can really see the tiling on this one. So let's add another fill adjustment with this map, set blend mode to multiply and lower balance to break up the bottom layer more. You can still see some of the tiling, but we can just bring the opacity way down. So you don't really notice this layer. It just adds a very subtle color imperfection to the black. Okay, cool. Let's actually add the metallic parts to the color mask. Add another fill layer with only albedo and metal. Set color to mid gray, add a color selection mask to it and select the metal parts only. Turn up metallic, doesn't have to be all the way up. 
Okay, nice. Let's create this tip of the barrel where you see this burnt exposed metal. Let's add a paint adjustment and start brushing out these parts with a grunge brush. Add a levels adjustment and choke it out so we get really sharp transitions. Okay, and add another fill layer. No, actually, let's add a folder called Burnt Metal. Add a black mask and copy the mask from this layer onto the folder's mask. Pull this layer into the folder and delete its mask. Now, add a new fill layer. Change color to some kind of a burnt orange. Add a black mask with a paint adjustment and softly brush in the edges. Then add another fill layer with some dark yellow color. Add a black mask and a paint adjustment and brush the yellows off the orange parts. And let's change blend mode to overlay. Yeah, something like this. Okay, one more fill layer with a very dark albedo and a color burn blend. Add a black mask with paint adjustment and paint in some of this color on the very edges. Yeah, looks really good. Okay, one more fill layer with roughness only. Lower the roughness a bit. Add a black mask with fill adjustment and add some fine noise grunge map. Scale it down even more. I and mean, we can add a levels adjustment and crank the white parts to expose it even more. Yeah, subtle but great. Okay. Okay, seems like the mask here is missing some of the edges. Mm, we can increase the tolerance in the color selection mask, but let's just add a paint layer and paint in these parts. Okay, let's add a fill layer with roughness only to the black parts. Bring down the roughness and add a black mask with a fill adjustment and some grunge map. Okay, scale it down a bit. Increase the cracks. Looks great. Okay, let's add those four metal bars on these parts. Add a folder. Add a fill layer. And, or better yet, let's duplicate the metal layer we already have and drag it into the folder. Add a black mask to the folder with a paint adjustment and start painting. Actually, let's also add a height channel to the metal layer and increase it a bit and keep painting. And the same on the bottom. And on the other side. Nice. Okay, let's actually do it slightly different. I'll copy this mask and paste it into the mask of the metal layer. Now I can shift click the folders mask to disable it. Turn off the high channel on the metal layer. Duplicate this layer and turn only the high channel on. Now I can add a filter adjustment to this layer's mask and blur it. And yes, I know I could probably just do it with anchor points. I probably would have if this was a more complex setup, but it's just so simple. And now I can add another paint adjustment to the metal layer and just break up all these metal parts manually. Okay, add another fill layer to the black folder. 
turn on only the high channel and add some height call it ridges and I'll just pick the basic soft brush turn off the pressure sensitivity on the scale up here click here and shift click here to make a straight line and actually I'll undo that and up here I'll turn on symmetry and click on the symmetry settings and change it to Y and we're going to have to adjust the symmetry point. So let's turn up the Y point until we see that red line right in between those two knobs. Perfect. Now, if I draw the ridges, it'll add it onto the other knob as well and save me the double work. So I just click, then hold shift, follow the straight line and click to create the line and do that all over. Cool. Now add a filter adjustment and blur it just a bit. and add another paint adjustment and with a black brush, remove some of the strokes that are bleeding onto the flat surface. Okay, let's go to the burnt metal folder, which has all these main metal parts as well and go to the paint adjustment in the mask and just break up some of the mask manually with a black brush. Let's go back to the black cracks on the green parts, add a levels adjustment to this black layer and choke it up to make everything sharper. Mm, what else? It looks like the ridge between the red and green part is actually missing color. So let's go to the red folders mask and up the tolerance on the color selector. And same for the green folders mask. Yeah, almost. Let's crank up the tolerance on the red mask. There you go. And let's add a fill layer to the red folder with black albedo only. Add a black mask with a generator adjustment. Set it to curvature. Set curvature to crevices. Add a paint adjustment and just break it up manually. And looks like the curvature is painting these parts as well. So let's remove these parts with a black brush. Okay, looks good. Let's export the textures. I'll go to file and export textures. Pick an export folder. Then in the global settings, I'll leave everything on except the normal channel. The actual bump normals will show up in the OpenGL normal channel and click export. Okay, I have this scene set up here. I have this large backdrop with a diffused blue color, this large area light lighting it at around 15 intensity and an area light from the top of the model at around 12 intensity. And I also have an HDRI for some ambient light. Okay, let's add a standard material and drag the first image of our UDIM set onto here. And to get it to read the UDIM set, I'll change the 1001 number to open angle bracket UDIM close angle bracket and that's it drag it into the albedo channel and would you look how beautiful i'll just turn up the wrap options here which might cause some artifacts and now i'll just control drag this node a few times one for the metallic channel roughness normals and height on this second node change name from base color to metallic third node from base color to roughness the normals i'll just copy paste the name of the file and lastly change base color to height Drag metallic to the metallic channel, roughness to roughness, normals to the bump channel using a bump node, set to tangent space. Maybe we can tone down the height. Still looks weird. Oh, we should change the color space on the normals to raw. There you go. Okay, the height map plug into the displacement channel using a displacement node. Change new range min to negative 0.5 and new range max to 0.5 because that's how substance exports height maps and height to like 0.25. We actually probably don't even need the displacement info only if you're really zoomed in. And if we really want it to work, add a redshift tag to the model, enable geometry override and enable tessellation and displacement. Yes, looks really good. We don't even need the displacement, honestly. I'll just turn it off for now. 
Okay, the material is a bit too shiny, so I'll make a couple adjustments. First, I'll add a ramp node and plug the roughness map to it. And just bring in the white notch to make the map brighter and making the model more rough. And add another ramp node, plug the roughness channel to it as well. Reverse the notches and bring in the black notch just until we see a little bit of darker areas. And I'll plug that to the reflection weight to essentially slightly reduce some of the specular channel wherever the texture is most rough. And last thing I wanna do is reduce the specular channel even more wherever there are chips and scuffs. So I'll use the height map for it, which already paints the indentations with a darker color. I'll plug the height node into a ramp node and combine this ramp with a specular ramp using a multiply node. Now if I solo the height ramp, Let's really crank those notches until we find a sweet spot that makes everything white, but still keeps some blacks in the indentations. Something like this. And if we solo the multiply, we can see it beautifully combining both of these together. So we can plug it into the reflection weight channel. Wow. And I can make the blacks of the height map slightly brighter to bring back some of the specular information there. Yeah, gorgeous and maybe even increase the whites on the roughness gradient to make it rougher. Yeah, look at this. It's superb. It's astonishing. It's breathtaking. It's dazzling. It's opulent. It's ravishing. It's ostentatious. It's just... It's so sick. All right, hope you learned something. Feel free to buy this model on the new plastic gum road. Comes in both octane and redshift PBR textures, mid poly and low poly version. Check out the prints and pins I made on the pink eye gum road. Consider supporting on Patreon because you know these videos wouldn't have never seen the light of day without the help of the invaluable patrons and members you see on the screen right now. I want all of you who've been watching to tell them thank you. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.